Phalaenopsis Transition Video 2.0 because Phalaenopsis Big Lip White Fowl 2.0 courtesy of Romeo Silvestre. Thank you so, so much. The reason I'm documenting this is because the first one that I did was growing so well into the Lekka and self-watering, but then she mysteriously collapsed on me. To this day, I don't know why. I'm gonna document this. It's going to be a transition tutorial of sorts, so let's go. We're going from organic media to inorganic media. The choice of which I have for my setup is Lekka. I do not have active root growth. I do not have roots coming out of the pot. And for that reason, I'm not going to be squeezing too much because I want to make sure that I protect the velamen. What I do have is an active leaf. So she is an active growth and everything else should follow imminently. Ideally, I would like to have her have active root growth, but my temperatures, my night temperatures are so amazingly warm that this is the ideal time to get her transitioned. I would like to stop the squeezing, but something is holding her back. So we'll go against my grain, not the headache kind, and do a little bit more of squeezing. You see, I don't like to squeeze too much when it comes to these fowls because the velamen can get cracked. But it was a very good advantage to not have roots coming through the bottom of the pot. This was pretty straightforward. And I was wondering if I would discover active roots. So we have our famous little enclosure here which is holding on to one nice root, but the other ones are gone. The ones that were in there initially. Now, not all roots will die in this little enclosure, but in this case, it has happened. I've had this orchid for a very long time now, and I have been dealing with her according to the media she is in, under the assumption that the media is somewhat breaking down so I've been pHing a little bit higher, kept her on a wet dry cycle as you do when you're dealing with bark or any other kind of organic media. So my pH for her fertilizing and supplementing has always been around seven. Yes, that sounds high. However, if the media is breaking down, then the pH will regulate itself to the nutrients that I would like it to take on board because the media is acidic. So I think we've done pretty, pretty well with that concept in mind because while the enclosure is always a bit dodgy because of the material that's being used, the rest of the root system has held on beautifully with the exception of something right at the end here that's gone a little bit soft and we can remove that old velamen. And that went soft because it was kinked at the bottom of the pot. There's a little bit of dryness here and that went dry because I have low, low humidity. And then there's a little bit of something in here that easily pulled off, which was old velamen. And there's another little bit of something dried out here, which was at the surface of the pot. Again, very dry climate. I have no humidity to speak of in my climate that would help any kind of surface roots to progress, develop normally and make for beautiful aerial roots. And that is why my setup is so important. The microclimate around the leaves of orchids like these with the lecker really boosts the humidity around the pot. And so the stomata do get a little bit of that benefit when they open at night. Phalaenopsis orchids, any thick cuticle orchids, open their stomata at night. So that is awesome. Now I can tell you that pretty much this is all I'm going to do. While some people would probably go a little bit more radical into the root system and flush it out, etc., I'm not going to do that, seeing as my media is going to be completely inorganic, so I don't have to fuss with the root system too much. Now, 
if you were to put it back into organic media, same thing would apply. My recommendation is to leave the root system as untouched as possible. We have a little bit of an issue right here. There's a little bit of decay. So because the root system is doing okay, I am going to take that off. If I didn't have much to work with, that part would stay on, but she's fine the way she is. I have been watching out for pests. I've had a few mealybugs, but when an orchid comes from a garden center, then they always bring some hitchhikers along. I have not seen mealybugs for quite some time. And with all of that treatment done, we are going to potter up into my preferred setup of Lekka and self-watering. Welcome to the video. I appreciate that you're here, even if you've seen this done hundreds and hundreds of times and you know what you are doing. The fact you're here supporting my channel with a view, your presence and a comment. If you have anything to add to what I'm doing, please go ahead and know that you are so appreciated. And that's it. That's all we're going to do. Not too shabby. I'm going to miss the roots down just a tad, just to see if I can wash off any of the loose bits, the debris. And if I get into the base here, it's okay this time of year. It is possible that I'm seeing a nubbin starting right there. So here's the thing. It is always advisable to have active roots growing in order to do a transition, any repot for that matter, even if you're going from organic to organic media. You are changing the climate of the pot. Doesn't matter that I'm transitioning into inorganic media. Any repot is a form of transition because the climate of the pot changes. Now, if you happen to have active root growth and you want to repot, go ahead, even though you may not have a leaf growing. With my example, the fact she is growing an active leaf here, <laughs> that is only a question of time when she starts her root growth. So for that reason, I'm going in because the signals are all there. Now, I have two microfibers, one pretty much to cover the bottom, which is flush at the bottom of the pot, and the other one that creates a kind of a loop where I'm going to be filling the leka in so that it collects underneath that loop. However, I am probably going to destroy that concept because the roots are so long, I don't need to fill a layer of leka underneath. I want this orchid to be in the pot, solid, secure, and if need be, even a little bit lower than the surface of the pot. Not meaning the base is going to be low in the media, but the surface of the orchid with the base and where the root starts a tad lower, always taking into consideration my very dry climate. And in order to protect the velamen even further from the banging and the bashing of something as hard and abrasive as leka is, I'm adding water. The buoyancy of the water is going to help my leka just distribute and disperse around the root system so, so much easier. Now, the position of the orchid, in my case, because they always get like a good lean to them, and the only stake that I use is the one to hold the orchid in position. I just have to make sure that I have her in the right direction because there's a curvature right here. So we're gonna have to turn her around. She already has like her own way of showing me her direction of growth, her direction of lean. So if you're seeing a lot of debris in the pot, I'm not worried about it. That's gonna flush out in time because after this, after this repot, she is going to need a lot, a lot of flushing just to keep the oxygen going in the pot. If you're putting this back into organic media, your wet dry cycle continues, but because your media is new, it may not retain as much water. You will also need to flush a little bit more often so that the same or similar climate can be simulated with new organic media as opposed to the decaying, degrading media that you had before, which retains a lot more moisture. Or you can add sphagnum moss or something of the sorts. That depends all on your climate and how you want to cultivate your orchid and your watering schedule. But for me, this is perfect. 
So I'm keeping her right up against the edge of the pot, even though I like my orchids in the middle of the pot. But I'm hoping that she's going to make it, that she's going to be fine, that she's not one of the categories that's going to collapse on me. I'm hoping she's going to be in this pot for two or three years and she'll get her own little lean on and it'll be in this direction because of the light source. So that's what I'm taking into consideration here. And now we just fill up with Lekka and just watch the water do the magic. The size of my Lekka is large, some little medium pieces in here, but mainly large because of the chunky roots. Just giving the pot a little shake on occasions, as you do, just so that the Lekka can go all the way around the roots easily and evenly. Don't want to create a gridlock, so I do this after every time I pour a little bit more Lekka in. That's the final height I want her at. I'm going to drain the pot now because I've got the lecker dispersed. The water was rising too much onto the base. Even though it is a beautiful, warm, sunny day in southern Spain, she's going to dry out before she goes back inside. Caution is key. So at the beginning of the video, you probably heard me emphasize the word temperature. When it came to learning how to transition Phalaenopsis orchids, I was making a lot of mistakes for many, many years. I couldn't get them to settle in. Of course, being warm to hot growers, they don't appreciate my colder winters. I do not use heat mats and I do not heat my grow space. So the evaporative cooling of the Lekka, yes, it has its effect. So my mistake in the past, and that was the last key to the puzzle of what I was doing wrong when I was putting my Phalaenopsis orchids into Lekka was temperature and the temperature outdoors right now in July is perfect until she establishes herself through the month of August and September before my night temperatures drop again by that time she will have rooted in and let me just say one thing if this orchid collapses on me like the other one did the method and the technique I'm using is not the mistake then there's something wrong with the orchid I will tell you what I would do wrong if she starts to collapse on me. I have many Phalaenopsis orchids now in my collection where I've applied the exact same transition method and they're all doing fine. Maybe, and I hope I'm wrong, maybe there is something wrong with big-lipped white Phalaenopsis. Maybe I just got a fluke with the other one. I won't know until much, much later. So subscribe to the channel because following the progress of this one, at least it has my curiosity peaked. Now, the one thing I do want to do, because we are pretty much done, that's all there is to it, is to stake her using the old flower spike just to hold her in position long enough for her to root in while I move her a lot and I will be flushing every third day from here on in. So if you're in a situation like me and you do not use heat mats or anything like that, I would advise that the temperature for these warm to hot growers when you transition into Lekka and self-watering does not go below 18 degrees Celsius, keeping in mind that Lekka has evaporative cooling, the temperature within the pot during the cooler months of the year will drop. If you are in a controlled environment, then none of these considerations apply because you've got the perfect climate to transition at any given point in time, as long as the orchid is in active growth. What you don't want to do is start a transition process while the orchid is still in the older pot. That is not going to work. We always have to work with what the orchid has in the pot and then wait for the right time to do a transition or a repot. And because we are still so early in the most beautiful time of year for me, I'm going to place a microfiber along the top of the roots that are very exposed right now as a boost for even more humidity encouraging new roots to come and then not letting them desiccate if they were to touch dry leca. So this microfiber is going to be damp for a very, very long time. And I'm going to fill the pot now back up with the seaweed and CalMag solution that she initially was soaking in, just to top the reservoir up. 
and give her exactly what she needs in order to grow more roots quickly, <laughs> including the hormones of the seaweed to kind of like tickle them out of her sooner rather than later. And final touch, Le Tag, Romeo's Nube. And there she is, the final result. I'm so happy I got another foul out of organic media. I hope that you liked this video in more ways than one, as in liked what you saw. I mean, who doesn't like a nice root system on a Phalaenopsis orchid, right? But also liked the video as in the YouTube housekeeping like. <laughs> know that if you have any questions with what I've just done, this is extremely brief. I'm going to link the original video in the description with my first Phalaenopsis nube. If you would like to see an extended version in the meantime, any questions, leave them in the comments. And I want to thank you so, so much for watching. And I want to also so wish you a very beautiful day. However, I attach a condition to that, and that is that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.